Hello, I'm Jeff Kennedy, President and CEO of Permacoat Industries. I want to thank you for using Permacoat's industrial coating. Our 100% solids formulation has no VOCs and no solvents in it. And although it is not indestructible, it is our strongest and most durable coating so far, rated at 2200 PSI at a sixteenth of an inch. Today I want to go over proper procedures for operating our cartridge system. First thing I want to talk about today is the proper temperature or the proper operating temperature of our cartridges. One part of our chemical is similar to syrup. If it gets too cold, it won't spray. If it gets too hot, it'll go through the mixed tube like water. So we don't want that happening. The ideal temperature is 85 degrees. You can operate in most cases between 80 to 90, but 85 degrees is our ideal temperature. Now if you don't have a way to keep them at 85 degrees, Permacoat offers a cartridge warmer. This is it here and it simply stores 12 cartridges. Now you can put them in there, it will keep your cartridges at 85 degrees and just make sure you load the, the warmer back up the night before you leave so that the cartridge itself will become warm throughout the entire thickness of the cartridge. Um, this warmer will keep it at 85 degrees, it has an emergency shut off so that it will not get too hot and melt your plastic. So if you don't have a way to keep your cartridges warm, let us know. We'll uh, be glad to set you up with one of these warmers. Now I want to talk to you about proper setup for your cartridge system. Every cartridge comes with its own mix tube. The mix tube consists of the main body, the retainer nut, and the spray tip. The spray tip simply slides down over the top of the mix tube. Next you want to remove the cap, the divider plug, tube in your hand, hold it firmly, pull the retainer nut real tight over the flanged area. You want to make sure when you apply this to the cartridge that you get a good tight seal. If you end up with a leak in this area, you're going to have bubbles in your coating. It's not hard to fix, just one less step you can eliminate by doing it properly. This is your spray tip. Your spray tip pushes down over the mix tube. It is very important that the spray tip does not go down past the end of the mix tube. It must be flush. Now I want to show you some of the features of our spray gun. You got your air intake where you hook your air hose. You got your atomization valve which gives you your air pressure to your spray tip. You got your adjustable regulator, we'll be setting that at 90 pounds. You have your trigger, and then you have your forward and reverse switch. And we'll go over that a little bit more in detail in a few minutes. Um, take your air hose, we want to set our regulator so you'll take your air hose and hook it up. And you'll notice that this one's almost already at 90 pounds, but to adjust it, you pull out on the regulator and you dial it. The next thing you want to do is you want to check your stroke pressure and make sure the gun's operating properly. To do that, you'll push your forward reverse button to the forward position and you'll pull the trigger and hold the trigger and you will notice the pistons moving forward. Now to retract it, you push your forward reverse button to the reverse and you pull and hold the trigger again. Then we know our gun's operating correctly. Now I want to show you the proper way to load your cartridge and hook it up to the air supply. Take your gun in one hand, cartridge in the other hand. You want to make sure your label is facing down so while you're spraying you can see how much material you're using. It's going to be very important that you do not expel every last drop out of this cartridge because if you do you'll end up with a little bit of unmixed material and you'll have to go back and fix that. Take the cartridge Hold it in one hand, make sure the end of the cartridge goes down over the pistons. Then you want to make sure the other end drops into this slot so the cartridge is locked into place. Then you take your atomization line and you hook it to your spray tip. At that point, the only other thing you need to do, hook your air up and you're ready to spray.
Okay guys, the next step is we want to make sure that our surface is prepared properly. I have two samples of steel. One's painted, one's bare metal. What you want to do first of all is clean all your metal before you start. Use MEK, lacquer thinner, isopropyl alcohol, either one of those will work. And then you're going to scuff it up. Here you'll be seeing us use a Teflon coated wire brush, cut brush on a grinder. You want to make sure you get a good profile in the metal. It needs some good sand scratches in it to give it something to bite to. After that, you want to turn around and wipe it and clear, uh, clean it again. Make sure you get all the dirt and debris from where you were sanding it, get that cleaned off. Now the only difference between the painted metal and the bare steel is bare steel you've got to apply Permacoat's bonding agent and you'll see us putting that on here. Um, one thing about painted surfaces, if you get in and you start grinding it and the paint starts coming off in flakes or sheets, just remember that our coating's going to stick to the painted surface and if you've got crappy paint on there then it's going to peel up with the paint. So if it starts coming off in sheets, let's get that off and uh, any bare metal you apply the uh, bonding agent. Permacoat is a strong, durable coating, but it's not going to stick to dirt or garbage. So guys, you don't need to cut corners in this step. You need to make sure you get it good and clean so our coating will stick good and you won't have any problems. It's best to do it right the first time and then you only got to do it one time. Now I want to talk to you about what is the most important part about applying our coating, and that's the safety of your spray man. We're going to start at his feet. Unless you're looking to make a pair of duck shoes, you need to make sure he has an old pair of shoes because this is the way they're going to end up looking. Then we want to go to a Tyvek suit with elastic armbands and leg bands. Make sure he has cotton socks to collect any sweat to keep that from dripping in the product. Cotton gloves, a head sock, and a full face respirator. There's no reason to cut corners in this area. The safety of your spray man is absolutely the most important part of applying our coating. Okay guys, we've got our surface prepped. We're ready to spray. What we're going to do is start loading the gun. So first thing you want to do, take your air hose. You're going to hook it to the air inlet. Make sure you got 90 pounds of pressure. Then we're going to take the cartridge. We're going to load it in the gun, label face down. Make sure the openings of the cartridge go over the cylinders and it drops into the channel in the front. Then you're going to hook up your air hose to your spray tip. At the same time, just feel that your spray tip is even with the mixed tube. Now, there is an air bubble in this cartridge. If you can see it, we'll move it around a little bit. That is a product of our filling machine. We've got to get that bubble out. So the first thing that we'll do when we get ready to spray is we're going to angle the gun just like this so the air bubble is closest to the exit on the mix tube. It'll be the first thing out of the gun when we turn the air on. In the previous segment I told you one of the most important things is your safety equipment. Make sure you got your Tyvek suit on, your duck shoes, good pair of cotton socks, so if you sweat, nothing drops on the, the uh, surface you're going to spray. Cotton gloves, there again, in case you sweat, it won't drop out. Put your uh, head sock on. Make sure you cover all skin. You'll have a little bit of exit hole here. Kind of look like the mask robber. Enough where you can see. If you suit up as tight as you can, want to make sure all our skin's covered. Then you take your full face respirator, and uh, this is probably the part y'all all listening out for where I can't talk anymore. So here we go. As you will notice here, I'm spraying the painted surface four times 
which is best for impact resistance, and I'm spraying the raw steel two times, which is good for rust proofing. Now, if your front load drivers are so good that they never bounce a dumpster off a cab shield, you could use just two coats, but we recommend four coats for impact resistance. Okay, we finished, we completely expelled the last cartridge. One thing you do want to do is when you're spraying is keep an eye on the volume of chemical that you use and just before it gets to the end, aim your gun away from your metal because that last little spit's going to be unmixed material and it's going to do a bubble or a blister. That's why we mainly put this in with the uh, label face down. Now, to take that cartridge out, your pistons are uh, retracted. You pull your little um, collar back on the elbow and that will come off of the mix tube. Lift the cartridge out. That's 100% disposable. And just throw it away. Then you load your next one in the same way we did the first one. Over the, mix, uh, over the uh, pistons and hook your hose back up to your spray tip. Now we're ready to spray. Okay guys, I deliberately put a drop of water on here to show you what it would look like if the chemical came out unmixed, if you ran that bubble through it, if somebody dropped some sweat on it, any kind of moisture. As you can see, it blistered, it bubbled up pretty good. It's a simple fix. You take a knife, you cut around it, and cut the bubble out. Just get you a good, good edge. Kind of trim back any loose edges. Now you got to keep in mind we just sprayed this probably not five minutes ago. The adhesion process is still occurring. So we're going to scrape any little outside edges to make sure we get all the water off of it. Now you're, still, you're going to still see this indentation when you do your touch-up coating, but your metal's going to be covered. Uh, it's, if it's in a dumpster, it's not going to be a big concern of how that really looks. Up on a cab shield, it's going to be far enough away that you're really not going to notice it. it uh, it's going to protect your metal, and that's the main thing is to keep it from rusting. Now after you've got that cleaned away, just to make sure you've got all um, residue of any kind of chemical, sweat or whatever, take you some uh, alcohol, some uh, lacquer thinner, MEK, any kind of cleaner that you got that's a fast drying and just take it and dab it in there real good. Just going to wipe it out and you can wipe the surrounding area just to make sure. Give that just a few seconds to dry and then you're ready to coat it again. What we're going to do is I'm going to swirl a little bit around this hole right here where we had to cut this out and then we're going to overlap it to try to blend it. We're going to come on back a little bit further. In case you want to put a texture coat or something up on top of a cab shield for slip resistance, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. At this point, if you're not applying a texture coat, you can stop spraying, retract the pistons, and save the remaining chemical. Place the divider plug and cap back on the cartridge, place the cartridge in the warmer, and save for another job. This will be good for up to six months after it's open. Now I know that'll work in your dumpsters and on your cab shields. I want to thank you for using Permacoat.